it's Sarah and welcome to my crochet channel today's video I'm going to show you how to make my velvet bunny pillow isn't she cute she's made with the new velvet yarns and we'll talk more about yarns in just a minute she measures about 10 by 10 inches and then of course more for her ears she's made in a spring design little flowers and you can find this crochet pattern on my blog and I'll put that blog link down in the notes underneath this video what you're going to need to make the bunny is a velvet yarn I designed this bunny using Bernat velvet it's a number five and I went to go and see if there was any other colors and I discovered this this is from lion bram and it states that it's a number four but if you look at the thickness of the two they're very similar and so i think you could probably use the velvet velux from lion bram if you have that on hand as well the other thing is any number five bulky yarn can be used to make your bunny you could use a blanket yarn or you could even use two strands of worsted weight number four acrylic yarn to make this bunny so there's lots of different ways you can make it I really really like the Bernat velvet this color is called top coffee so you know I like that <laughs> and I think it's just the perfect color for our bunny now you're also going to need some other chunky yarns and what we're I'm going to be using let me grab these is these are some leftover yarns I had from other projects I made her flowers and her eyes and then her nose and mouth from this yarn and it is red heart soft essential and it is also a number five uh, you, uh, but again you can use two strands of any worsted weight for the eyes and the flowers if you want to we make three flowers and then that means you're going to need three buttons and so I'm going to pull out some of my bright buttons I'm going to do the eyes in green instead of this black and then I'm going to use these three bright buttons for my flowers now the buttons are just decoration and remember if you're giving this to a small child you might not want to use the buttons or use them big enough where they aren't going to you know bite them off and choke on them so keep that in mind with who you're going to give the bunny to I noticed I had an H hook laying here on my workspace we are not using an H hook you're using a J which is a 6.00 millimeter crochet hook you need a little bit bigger now the yarn calls for a K but since I'm making a pillow I decided to go with just a little bit smaller so my stitches will be closer together so you're going to need a J hook that's a 6.00 millimeter crochet hook you're going to need a needle for weaving in ends and I suggest you also have a smaller needle for when you sew your eyes on if your needle doesn't fit through the holes of your buttons and then of course you'll need your scissors the last thing you're going to need is a way to stuff your bunny you can just use regular polyester fiber fill and stuff your bunny if you want to I'm going to show you how to make a pillow form that you can put on the inside of your bunny and that will keep your stuffing from showing and all you need for that is some ne a needle and some thread a couple of pins for holding your project in place and something to make the pillow form out of I like to use these fat quarters because they're around a dollar and you only need one of these to make the pillow form you can also use bandanas they work great they're about a dollar or any leftover fabric that you may have say a pillowcase that doesn't match anything anymore that you want to use even an old dress shirt I do suggest you stick with a cotton or a poly cotton and not to go with the t-shirt fabric because it gets too stretchy and loses its shape but you can make these out of any kind of fabric that you have on hand and like I said they're inexpensive and super easy to make we'll make the pillow form we'll stuff it and close it and then slide it inside of our bunny and that way the bunny pillow will hold its shape as well 
We're going to begin with the circle for the bunny pillow first, and you're going to need to make two. I've already got one made, and I'm going to show you how to make one. Super easy if you've ever made a circle. We'll begin with our slip knot. We'll chain five, one, two, three, four, five. We'll join in a circle, pull the tail through the loop, snug that down, and we'll make that stay knot. Now, working with uh, this velvet yarn can be a little bit tricky. And I'm using a little bit of a smaller hook than what the yarn calls for so that we can make the stitches just a little bit snugger. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to put our hook in, pull up a loop, and chain three. Our chain three will count as our first double crochet on all the rows of the bunny head. All right, so our chain three counts as our first double crochet. We're going to stitch nine more double crochets in our chain five loop. Yarn over, go in the loop, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over and go through the second two. There's our second double crochet because our chain three is our first. All right, so let's do eight more. The more you work with this yarn, the more comfortable you'll become and you will absolutely love the results. It's very smooth, very slick, and slides around the crochet hook very nicely. All right, let me do this one. Let's see how many we have. Here's our chain three. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We need one more. All right. We're going to join to the top of our chain three with a slip stitch like we usually do. Get it in there. I missed it. See, that's where this velvet can be a little bit tricky. There we go. There's our slip stitch and chain three. And we're going to turn this over, gently pull that so our hole closes, and then we'll weave that in when we finish our circle. So there's row one. Ten double crochets, join with the slip stitch and chain three. Let's do row two. Our chain three here again counts as our first double crochet. We're going to double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three, and then we'll stitch two double crochets in each of the double crochets around. So we have 10 double crochets on row one, and row two we should have 20. And again, take your time and find those stitches. And I'm going to give you a little hint about how to do that. If you look at the top of your stitches around here, you'll see where the two loops are, and that's where you'll place your stitches. Sometimes I'll go in and find it with my thumb, and it's just something you're going to have to get used to looking for when you're working with the velvet yarn, and it is definitely worth it. This yarn is so much fun to work with, and it works up beautifully, and it has such a beautiful shine or sheen to it, that it just, whatever you make with it is just gorgeous and soft. Isn't that beautiful? All right, so for row two, we're stitching two double crochets in each of the double crochets around, and we should have 20 double crochets. I've stitched those 20 double crochets around. I'm going to join to the top of my chain three with a slip stitch and chain three. All right, so now we've done two rows. Let's do the third row. 
The third row we're going to be doing what I call two and one. Our chain three here counts as our first double crochet and we're going to double crochet in the same stitch as that chain three. Then we're going to stitch one double crochet <clears throat> in the next. And throughout this row we'll be stitching two double crochets in the next double crochet. There's one and two. And then one double crochet in the next. And repeat. Two double crochets in the next double crochet. There we go. And one double crochet in the next. Here's two and one. And we'll do this all the way around. Alright, so two double crochets in the next and one double crochet in the next. Two and one, working all the way around this row. I completed that row of one and two. You should have 30 double crochets for row three. I joined to the top of my chain three and I chained three. And now we're ready for row four. On row four, we're going to do two and two. So our chain three counts as our first double crochet and then we'll double crochet in that same stitch as our chain three. Then we'll stitch one double crochet in the next two double crochets. And then the next double crochet will stitch two double crochets. One and two. And I hope by now you're not having any problem finding where to put your stitches. Remember to follow that row of two stitches around the top. I call that the braid. I realize a braid has three loops, but this is the two loops that are sort of look like a braid across the top of your rows. All right, so we're going to stitch one double crochet in the next two double crochets. Then we'll stitch two double crochets in the next two and two. <laughs> one double crochet in the next two and two double crochets in the next one and two. And we'll do this all the way around. And again, there's our two individual double crochets and then our two together. And like I was just saying, we'll stitch this all the way around and then we'll join to the top of our chain three like we did on our previous rows. Oops. <laughs> All right, now, just to recap, row one, you should have 10, row two, 20, row three, 30, row four, 40 double crochets. So we've come up by 10 on each row. All right, now we're going to do row five. Again, we're going to place that double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three. And this time we're going to place three double crochets individually before we do the two together. So we're doing three and two. So one double crochet in the next, bring this down here, one double crochet in the next three stitches and then two double crochets in the next. One double crochet in the next three stitches and two double crochets in the next. Then again, we'll work this all the way around and join to the top of our chain three.
I've completed that fifth row and I have 50 double crochets, I join to the top of my chain three and chain three. And now we're going to stitch four and two. Our double crochet again counts as our first double crochet and we'll double crochet in the same stitch as that chain three. And then we'll stitch one double crochet in the next four stitches. So there's one, two, three, and four. So we stitched four double crochets, one in each of the next four, and then two double crochets in the next stitch. That's four and two. And we'll continue this around for row six. One, two, three, and four double crochets, one in each of the next, and then two double crochets in the next. And repeat. One, two, three, and four. And two double crochets in the next. One and two. This is our last row for the center portion of our bunny. And we'll just repeat four and two, working all the way around. And then we'll join to the top of our chain three. I've completed that sixth row and you should have 60 double crochets in your sixth row. Now, we're going to need two of them. After you make your first circle, go ahead and tie off and weave that end in, all right? Then with the second one that you make, uh, join to the top of your chain three with a slip stitch, but don't tie off because we're going to put the two circles together with the right sides on the outside and um, we're going to stitch them together and we'll stitch all the way around but we'll leave an opening so that we can stuff it all right i'm going to go ahead and show you how to do this and then i'm going to show you how to make that pillow form and i think you're really going to like it because it makes it a much neater pillow all right so i'm going to go ahead and chain one there and so now we're going to sew the two circles together but we're also going to leave a gap at the end so we can slide that pillow form inside. All right, so we're gonna go through the, the two loops on this side and the two loops on this side. And everything should line up because both of your circles should have 60 stitches all the way around. So I've got my hook through, I'm gonna pull up a loop, and I'm gonna stitch a single crochet. We'll go through the next two loops on this side and the next two loops on this side, pull a loop through and stitch a single crochet. And that's the way we're going to hook the two together. This particular row, because we're sewing them together, I do suggest that you don't stitch too tightly, but also make sure there isn't any gaps because you don't want um, your pillow to be all bunchy. And what I mean by that is if you stitch these stitches too tightly and it bunches in, you're not gonna have a nice, pretty laying pillow. Now this is just a basic round pillow. And if you just wanna make some nice, fuzzy velvet round pillows, this is a great pattern for that. But of course, we're going to make it into a bunny. All right, so I'm going to continue on around, stitching my front to my back of my pillow using single crochets all the way around until I reach. I'm going to leave about four inches of a gap, and then I'm going to uh, show you how to make that pillow form. 
I've single crocheted my two circles together working all the way around and I've left myself about a four inch opening. All right. And what you're going to do is you're going to need to take your fabric that you're going to use. I'm using this fat quarter. That cardboard out. And you need two thicknesses. So what I do is I just fold it over so there's two thicknesses. Okay, we need just a little bit more space. Okay, now try to lay it out flat. All right, then we just take a pen and we go right on that edge and draw around where we want that to fit. All right, so I'm going to move my pillow out of the way. There's my edge. Then I'm going to grab some pens. And I'm going to put a pin at the four corners, even though there's no corners on a circle. <laughs> the four sides. And you'll notice I'm doing them flat on the inside. All right, then we're going to take some thread and a needle. And we'll just begin sewing. And where you'll sew is on the inside of the circle. And here's my um, circle. And um, oh, before you cut, before you start sewing, make sure you take your scissors and use your fabric scissors. Don't use paper scissors. <laughs> and just cut around the outside of the circle. And let me move this one so you can see what I've already got done here. Here's my circle. And you can see I just snipped it out real quick on the outside. And then I sewed along the inside a seam. And you can do this on your machine if you have a machine. That's totally fine. I just did it by hand making little stitches and then I made a, a little extra loop there so that I could turn it over to stuff it. Now, um, the reason that we stitch on the inside of our drawing is because we want it to slide up in there and fit. And that's about an eighth of an inch, I would say, to the inside of where we traced our circle. All right. Now, this will work for any shape that you have. Um, even if it's pointed or square, you're just going to have to remember to use your scissors and make some clips. And what we did is we just clipped around this edge. And I'll show you. I'll do some more here. Don't go through your stitches, but just clip those edges around. And this is just going to help it so that when you turn it out, it's going to fit better. All right, I'm going to go ahead and clip these little edges a little bit that a little better. All right, so I've clipped my edges. It's all cut. And then I sewed around the edge on the inside about an eighth of an inch. And I'm leaving this attached because I'm going to use this to close this up. All right. And I just used this uh, regular old polyester blend cotton yarn and a regular sewing needle. Now I'm taking my finger and I'm kind of pushing around the edges. Okay, so there's my circle. And now I'm just going to take some stuffing and it's up to you how tight you want to stuff it. All right. Needle out of the way and just start shoving some stuffing in there. If you want it to be tight, you can do it tight. If you want it to be um, a loose stuffing, you can. That's totally fine. I like to get as much stuffing in there as I can. And make sure if you have corners, you fill the corners. And here we have a circle, so I'm trying to get all the way around those circles. And I've got a little bit more. I'm going to put that right in the center. And I think that's stuffed nice. It's going to make a nice pillow. And now we need to close the end of this. So what we'll do is we'll just bend it under a little bit. Let's see, where did I put my pens? Here we go. I'm just going to pin it just so it stays put. And it's up to you how many pins you want to do. I like to do two or three just so it stays 
where I want it to stay. That's my needle. I'll make sure I get my thread out. And one thing to remember, if you're not really the most perfect sewer, it's okay because this is on the inside of your pillow. And so no one's going to see this. This is going to slide right inside your bunny. All right, I'm going to like pull it out. And then we'll just take this thread. I'm going to go and pull that needle out, pin out because it's in my way. And we'll just take this thread and we'll just make whip stitches to close it up. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to hold. I'm going to need some more yarn on here. So I'm going to some more thread. I'm used to saying yarn. So I'm just going to push that inside. Get a little bit more yarn. And then I'll finish sewing that up. And then I'll show you also how to put it on the inside of your bunny. I finished stitching closed the side of my pillow form. You can see it isn't gorgeous, but no one's going to see that. All right, so now I'm going to slide it inside my pillow. And I tried to choose a color that was similar, the fabric I mean, that is similar to this that isn't going to show through. And you want, might want to keep that in mind when you're choosing which fabrics you want to use. All right, and now we just need to finish stitching this closed. And the nice thing about doing a pillow form is you don't have all that stuffing that wants to leak out. And you also get a more uniform shaped pillow. So if you're making these for throw pillows or for, I mean, they are decorations, but I hope they will get played with as well. This is a great technique just to make a quick little pillow form out of some fabric you might already have on hand so that your bunny has a more uniform look and it just makes it a little bit more sturdy, I think. All right, so I'm almost back around. I'll find my opening here. Oh, right there. Just single crocheting back around to that first single crochet. There we go, cut our yarn. And we'll tie that off and I'm going to go into the next stitch and pull that into the back and then I'll use my needle and weave that in but there is my bunny pillow with the pillow form here is one bunny ear make sure that you make two and what we're going to do is we're going to make a slip knot and we're going to chain 12 All right, now we're going to place one double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. One, two, three, four. Those first three chains will count as one double crochet. And then we'll double crochet in each of the chains across. All right, and then we reach the last chain. We're going to stitch two double crochets, one and two. So we have our chain three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight double crochets, and then two double crochets in the last stitch. Now we're going to turn our work and we're going to stitch down the other or opposite side of our chain. And in our first stitch or chain, we're going to stitch two double crochets. One and there it is, two. Got to find it. Sometimes they're kind of difficult. And then we'll stitch one double crochet in each of the chains working back down. One, 
There we go. All right. Okay, now we're going to chain one and turn. And this last row on our bunny ear, we're just going to put one single crochet in each of the double crochets working all the way around the ear. This is gonna help our bunny ear not be quite so floppy. My original bunny ears, we did them a little bit longer and we didn't add this extra row and they're just a little too floppy. Now, floppy bunny ears are cute, but we just wanted them to look a little more um, stable. I don't know what the better word for that is, but um, yeah, we just wanted to make them look better. And so we added this row of single crochet and shortened them up just a little bit and I like them much better. If you want your bunny ears to be longer, you can add more chains at the beginning of your bunny ear where we started and then do everything the same. Just make sure that you add those extra stitches in where you added extra length. Get in there. There we go. All right, there's my last single crochet and there's my second bunny ear. We're going to cut our yarn, but we're going to leave ourselves about 10 or 12 inches because we're going to use that to sew it onto the bunny pillow. So I'm going to go ahead and tie that off. And then I need to weave in this end right here, and then I'll show you how to add your bunny ears to your pillow. Now you need to decide where you want the top of your pillow to be. And I like to do about right here Keep it away from where we seamed up just because it can be a little messy if it's pulled on. All right, so then we're going to decide to put our bunny ears on. All right, so what we're going to do is we'll take one of the bunny ears. We'll thread that onto our needle. Remember, you need a needle with a nice big eye for this yarn. We're going to put them together. We'll make a stitch going through both sides, and then we'll sort of flatten that out. And what we're going to do is we're going to set it right on that row of single crochet and push it forward and then we'll just stitch it on. Whoops. <laughs> Make sure you go through several stitches so that it's on there securely. I turn it over, give it a little bit of a pull. Looks like it's going to hold great. I'll weave it back through a few more times. Make sure it's in there nice and snug. And then I'm just going to go in the back of the hat. I mean the back of the pillow. <laughs> back of the hat. This is not a hat. <laughs> and clip that string. And then we'll do the same thing. Whoops. There we go. Then we'll do the same thing to the next ear. the end together, stitch it a few times, lay it flat and put it right next to the other one. Now I like them bunched up right together. You may like them a little more separated. It's up to you how you do your bunny pillow. And the nice thing about this velvet yarn is it is very forgiving. It hides your stitches well, and I really like that. Okay, now one thing I do in the center where my two ears are is I'll put them together. And what I mean by that is I'll just stitch across both of them. After I've got the second ear on, just to make a few stitches so you can see they're kind of hooked together right there. Because that's where we're going to be adding all those pretty flowers. All right, and then if I'm happy with the way it looks, just make a few more stitches knowing it's going to stay put. There we go. 
and then we'll just go down into some stitches and cut that yarn now if you want to make some knots you can I just haven't seen that it was necessary with this particular pillow just FYI when you're working with the velvet yarn you are gonna find little hair fluffs everywhere and that's what I keep finding on my workspace here <clears throat> we're going to make three flowers that have four petals and where each one's going to have a button so I'm using the chunky number five for the flowers but I've also got some yarns here that are just a regular worsted weight number four that match my buttons so that when I sew them on the thread will match I've got my thick needle and my small needle so I can get it through the holes of my buttons all right so let's go ahead and make that flower we're going to begin with the slip knot we're going to chain two and then in this second chain we're going to stitch eight single crochets one two three four five six seven and eight we'll join to this first single crochet and chain three I mean chain two sorry chain two we have our two chains in the next stitch we're going to stitch three double crochets one two and three then we'll chain two we'll slip stitch in the next single crochet and chain two one and two now in the next single crochet we'll stitch three double crochets again one two and three chain two we'll slip stitch in the next stitch and chain two and then we'll repeat this two more times so we'll have four petals all right last petal one two three double crochets and chain two and we'll join to that last stitch and make sure when you cut off you leave yourself a little bit of yarn so that we can sew it onto our bunny all right so I'm going to go ahead and tie that off and I'm going to turn this over and I'm first thing I'm going to do is make sure I don't have that hole in the center of my flower so I'll just go around these stitches and pull that in there we go blunt ended needle there all right and then I'll just go through a few stitches and weave it in So we closed our hole and weaved in this last stitch or this last piece of yarn I should say not stitch all right so now I have a flower here's my end and what I do like to do with this is thread it on the needle and just bring it to the center there we go that way when I sew it on it's already in the center <clears throat> and I can put it on my bunny all right now I need to choose which uh, color of button I want I think I'm gonna put the orange on the blue put the blue on the pink and put the pink on the purple all right so with this all you do is you take a matching thread that's similar and a smaller needle because this big needle will not fit through the holes of that button and all we're going to do is attach the button to the flower all right so we're gonna come up from the bottom like that do it a couple times make sure that button's gonna hold 
All right, so there's my button. I got off center a little bit, didn't I? <laughs> All right, then I just take the strings or the yarn, whatever I'm using, to sew it on, and I tie a nice knot. And again, if you think this knot's not going to hold, you can always put a little bit of fray check or fabric glue on there. But I, I don't because it's going to be sewn to the bunny, and it's, it's not really going to get anywhere and tear. It's not like you're button it, buttoning it through a buttonhole. All right, so now I need to sew the buttons on my other two flowers, and then I'll show you how to attach them to the bunny pillow. All right, it's super easy to add the flowers. I'm going to put the teal in the middle, and then I'll bunch up these other ones on the side. All right, so what we do is we thread that uh, needle with that yarn that we have hanging off our uh, flower. <laughs> we'll just go in the top of the bunny head, and we'll go around these stitches. We don't want to sew the petals down. We just want the flower to be attached. Okay, so I'm just going to go around that flower, sewing it to the top of the bunny head. Like that. And so that way the petals are still loose, but it's still attached. All right, and then we'll just go in and weave that in to the back. And we'll do that on the other two flowers as well. Just like that, super easy. And then we'll just bring that in to the inside and clip it. All right, so I'm going to attach the other two flowers just like that. And then I'll show you how to make the eyes and add the cute little face. I've already made one eye and attached it to my bunny. And I'm going to show you how to make the other one. Of course, you're going to need a button and some yarn. And I'm again using the Soft Essentials Chunky Number 5. All right, and so what we're going to do is we'll start with our slip knot. And we'll chain nine chains. We're going to place a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. One, two, three, four. And then we'll double crochet in those next five stitches. There we go. Now we're going to turn and we're going to double crochet back up. We're not going to add any extra stitches there. And that's because we want it to kind of curl in. And you'll notice as you make this first stitch, it kind of curls in. And that's the top and the bottom of the eye. Then we'll just double crochet down, working on the opposite or other side of the chain. One double crochet in each double crochet. Actually, in each chain where we placed our double crochets. All right, there's our last stitch. We're going to join to the top of that first chain three with a slip stitch. And that's how the eye is supposed to look. Looks a little bit like a boat. <laughs> All right, we're going to tie off, but leave yourself a good amount of yarn, about 16 inches, because we're going to use that to sew it onto our bunny. All right, so now we're going to go in the next stitch, pull that loop to the back, and tie off. All right, let's go ahead and weave in the end where we started. Just push that up in there and back down. We can tie that off. All right, now we're going to quickly add our button. I always kind of stretch it out just a little. I've got some green yarn on here. We're going to put it right in that little spot. That's a little bit tight, so I'm not going to try to put it through again. 
but it would be ideally better to go through a couple of times. <clears throat> Tie our knot and clip that yarn. Now the placement of the eyes on the bunny is up to you. I want mine to look just a little bit sweet and silly and so I've got them up high. All right, but if you be careful because you don't want to slant them because you don't want your bunny to look mean. So make sure they go up or, or a little bit to the inside, but you can make them farther apart or however you would like it. I'm going to line them up evenly with my eyes <laughs> and we're just going to go in and attach that eye. And what I do is I come up, I go to the stitch before it, and then I go to the stitch after it. Then I'll make a stitch going around those loops on the outside. I'll go back and then go to the next one like that. Okay, that one's a little off center. Let's get it where it belongs. And one nice thing about having that pillow form in there is you know you're not going to go too deep. It's going to stay right where it belongs. Alrighty, so we'll go down, up the next one, and then go back. There we go. Alrighty. Whoops. Oh man. <laughs> Snagged my eye. All right, so I've gone around. I'm going to go up the center here. And this is just going to weave it in a little bit. Like that. And then out to the side. And we'll clip that yarn. So now my bunny has two cute little green eyes, which I really love. So I've got more of my pink that I used for this flower. And we're going to center the nose right in this center on this circle. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to start down here and go up. And I'm going to leave this hanging out. Okay. That's a long about six or eight inches. And then we're going to go to the side and go across. And this is going to help us know where our triangle for the nose is. All right, <clears throat> then we'll cross here. And then we'll begin filling in the nose however we want to. You can do it thick or thin. It doesn't matter how many stitches that you use. Just fill in the pink nose. Once the nose is filled in as much as you like it, I like to make a couple more stitches going across the top and then I'll just weave that in underneath. All right, now with this piece that we have here, we're going to make the bottom part of the mouth. So we'll thread that on, we'll come down to that next row. There we go. And we'll just make a line meet up with that and a line meet up with that. There we go. And I usually go right up underneath there so I can just weave it in. All right. Then we'll pull that out a little. And of course, it's up to you how thick you want to do the nose, how um, thick you want to do the mouth. Um, I think I'm going to come back in and do a few more stitches in the nose so that it's just a little bit thicker. But that's how we make our bunny, our velvet bunny pillow. So that's how you make our velvet bunny pillow for spring or Easter decorating or 